family or religious without some type of use of force, do you think that society ever exists without use those force on your wife? Um, well, what are we considering force? Is withholding sex, for instance, is that considered force, or is uh, you know saying we're going to well, cancel a vacation? Deprivation of an expected reward is a punishment. So, um, so you sure. could well no, but but I mean this is a serious question. I mean, yeah. look, look, if we're we're thinking about the optimization of social structures, mm -hmm. we might as well start from the base level of social structure and scaffold up. Sure. So, right? I, so, like, if a wife is upset at a husband, for instance, would that be considered? Uh, use of force. I think a negative punishment. You're removing a stimulus to punish a person mm -hmm. for something. Yeah. Would you consider that like a use of force? Or I would say it would depend to some degree on the intent. The intent is to punish. A behavior, well, if the right? intent is to punish, then then it's starting to move into the into the domain of force. I mean, look, mm -hmm. look. While we've been talking, you know, there have been bursts of emotion, right? Yeah. And that's because we're freeing entropy and trying to close and to enclose it again. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to produce. It produces negative emotion, fundamentally, most fundamentally, anxiety and pain, and secondarily, something like anger, because those emotions are quite tightly linked. Sure. And so, within the confines of a marriage, because we might as well make it concrete, there are going to be times when disagreements result in bursts of emotion. Mm -hmm. And those bursts of emotion don't necessarily have to have an instrumental quality, right? It's when the Emotion is used manipulatively to gain an advantage that's short-term for the person and then maybe that's at the expense of the other person or even at the expense of the person who benefits future self, then it starts to tilt into the manipulative. There's a, there's a tetrad of, of, of traits. Mm -hmm. So narcissism, Machiavellianism, that's manipulativeness. Nar narcissism is the desire for unearned social status. That's what you'd gain, for example, if you were gossiping and elevating mm -hmm. your social status. Machiavellianism, narcissism, psychopathy, that's predatory parasitism. And those culminate in sadism and that cloud of negative emotion that's released in the aftermath of disagreement can be tilted in the direction of those traits. And that's when it becomes malevolent. And that's when the problem of force starts to become paramount. Because I, I think I think that your I think that your fundamental presupposition was both Hobbesian and ill-formed. I do not believe that the basis for the civilized polity is force. Now you're saying that. You know, you can't abjure the use of force entirely. And I would say, unfortunately, that's true. I would but, agree with you. You're, but if the if the policy isn't invitational, mm -hmm. if I can't make a case that that's powerful enough for you to go there voluntarily, then the policy is flawed. Now, it may be that we have some cases where we can't do better than a flawed policy because we're not smart enough. And mm -hmm. maybe the incarceration of mo of Criminals with a long-term history of violent offenses is a good example of that. We don't know how to invite those people to play. Uh -huh. they, they have a history, generally from the time they're very young children, from the age of two, of not being able to play well with others. And it's a very, very intractable problem. There's no evidence in the social science literature at all that hyper-aggressive boys by the age of four can ever be socialized in the course of their life. The penological evidence suggests that if you have multiple offenders, your best bet is to keep them in prison till they're 30. And the reason for that is it might be delayed maturation, you know, biologically speaking, but most criminals start to burn out at around 27. So it spikes, it's a big spike when puberty hits, and then stability among the hyper-aggressive types. So actually what happens is the aggressives at four tend to be aggressive their whole life and then they decline after 27. Uh -huh. The normal boys are not aggressive. They spike at puberty and go back down to baseline, right? And so you don't really rehabilitate people in prison for obvious reasons. I mean, look at the bloody places. There are great schools for crime in, in large, but if you keep them there until they're old enough, they tend to mature out of that, except the worst of them tend to mature out of that predatory short-term oriented lifestyle.